Hello and welcome to another lecture on inverse trigonometric functions. Today we shall be starting with discussion of properties and graph of inverse cosecant function. Later we are going to deal up with some properties of inverse trigonometric functions. And finally we shall conclude this lecture on inverse trigonometric functions by discussing some numerical problems that would be based on the usage of properties of inverse trigonometric functions that would be discussed in this lecture in the coming segments. Now starting with the inverse cosecant function, for this let us consider a function fx which is equal to cosec x with domain equal to r except for even multiples of pi by 2 and the range of this function is equal to the union of minus infinity to minus 1 and 1 to infinity. A portion of the graph of cosec x is as shown. Now here we can make it very much evident that f is not 1 to 1. But if we restrict our domain to union of minus pi by 2 to 0 and 0 to pi by 2, f is 1 to 1. And so it has an inverse function called inverse of cosecant function or r cosecant function and is denoted by cosecant inverse. Thus y is equal to cosec inverse of x if and only if x is equal to cosec of y and y belong to interval of union of minus pi by 2 to 0 and 0 to pi by 2. Next we are going to discuss the properties of the above defined function that is cosec inverse x. The domain of cosec inverse x is union of minus infinity to minus 1 and 1 to infinity and its range is given as the union of minus pi by 2 to 0 and 0 to pi by 2. Next we have the value of cosec of cosec inverse x is equal to x for x mod of x is greater than equal to 1. And the value of cosec inverse of cosec y is equal to y for y belonging to interval minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and y not equal to 0. The function cosec inverse x is strictly decreasing and is 1 to 1. Now let us draw the graph for the function y which is equal to cosec inverse of x. Now in order to draw the graph for this function we need to note that y which is equal to cosec inverse x decreases from 0 to minus pi by 2 as x increases from minus infinity to minus 1 and y decreases from pi by 2 to 0 as x increases from 1 to infinity. Thus the graph obtained for y can be represented as shown. Now here the portion of the curve for which y lies between minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 is known as the principal branch of the function y equal to cosec inverse of x and these values of y are known as the principal values. Now we are going to discuss the properties of inverse trigonometric functions. First let us define the self-adjusting property of inverse trigonometric functions. For example, while considering sine inverse function, we have the value of sine inverse of sine of phi equal to phi and similarly the value of sine inverse of sine of x is equal to x. On the same line, the value of cos inverse of cos of phi equal to phi and the value of cos inverse of cos of x equal to x. Similarly, the value of 10 inverse of 10 of phi would be equal to phi and the value of 10 inverse of 10 of x equal to x. We have another property of inverse trigonometric functions which is known as reciprocal property according to which we can represent sine inverse x as cosec inverse of 1 by x. Similarly, cos inverse x can be represented as sec inverse of 1 by x and the value of 10 inverse x is equal to cot inverse of 1 by 
x and similarly cot inverse x can be represented as 10 inverse of 1 by x and sec inverse x is equal to cos inverse of 1 by x. On the similar lines, we can represent cosec inverse of x as sin inverse of 1 by x. The main agenda of this reciprocal property is to convert the inverse trigonometric function into corresponding reciprocals. Next, we are going to discuss the conversion property of inverse trigonometric functions which converts one inverse trigonometric function in terms of other. Here, in order to express sin inverse x as cos inverse, we can write sin inverse x equal to cos inverse of root of 1 minus x square and this function can also be represented in 10 inverse x as 10 inverse of x divided by root of 1 minus x square. Thus, using this property, we can express the sin inverse x in terms of cos inverse and 10 inverse. We can represent cosec inverse 1 by x equal to sec inverse of 1 by root of 1 minus x square. This can be further expressed in terms of cot inverse as cot inverse of root of 1 minus x square whole divided by x. We can further represent cos inverse of x as sin inverse root of 1 minus x square and this can be further represented as in 10 inverse as 10 inverse of root of 1 minus x square whole divided by x. Thus, in order to express one inverse trigonometric function in terms of other ones, we use conversion property of inverse trigonometric functions. Next, we are going to discuss some important results that would be helpful in solving or evaluating the given inverse trigonometric function. The first result states that the sum of sin inverse of x and cos inverse of x is equal to pi by 2 and the sum of 10 inverse of x and cot inverse of x is also equal to pi by 2. The summation of cosec inverse of x and sec inverse of x is also equal to pi by 2. Next, we are going to obtain the result that is obtained by addition of 10 inverse of x and 10 inverse of y which is equal to 10 inverse of x plus y whole divided by 1 minus xy if xy is less than 1. Now, if xy is greater than 1, then 10 inverse of x plus 10 inverse of y is equal to pi plus 10 inverse of x plus y whole divided by 1 minus xy. The result obtained by subtracting 10 inverse of x and 10 inverse of y is equal to 10 inverse x minus y whole divided by 1 plus xy. The addition of 10 inverse of x, 10 inverse of y and 10 inverse of z results into 10 inverse of x plus y plus z minus xyz whole divided by 1 minus xy minus yz minus zx. 2 10 inverse of x can be represented as 10 inverse of 2x divided by 1 minus x square and 2 sin inverse x can be represented as sin inverse of 2x root of 1 minus x square. And 2 cos inverse x can be written as cos inverse of 2x squared minus 1. Using these results, we can easily evaluate the value of inverse trigonometric functions. Finally, we are going to deal up with some numerical problems on inverse trigonometric functions. Here we have a problem in which we have to prove that 10 inverse of x plus cot inverse of x plus 1 is equal to 10 inverse of x square plus 1 plus x. In order to prove this trigonometric expression, first we consider the left hand side which has 10 inverse x plus cot inverse x plus 1. Now using the reciprocal property, we can convert cot inverse x plus 1 as 10 inverse of 1 divided by x plus 
1. Thus, we have the left hand side as 10 inverse x plus 10 inverse of 1 by x plus 1. Now, using the important results that we have discussed and that gave us the value of 10 inverse x plus 10 inverse of y as 10 inverse of x plus y whole divided by 1 minus xy. Thus, we can rewrite this left hand side as 10 inverse of x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 whole divided by 1 minus x into 1 divided by x plus 1. Thus we have this as 10 inverse x square plus x plus 1 whole divided by x plus 1 and this is divided by x plus 1 minus x divided by x plus 1. This gives us 10 inverse of x square plus x plus 1 which is equal to right hand side. Thus we have proved that 10 inverse of x plus cot inverse of x plus 1 is equal to 10 inverse of x square plus x plus 1. Now here we have utilized the reciprocal property of inverse trigonometric function that we have used to convert cot inverse term into 10 inverse term and later we had used the result obtained that gave us the value of 10 inverse of x plus 10 inverse of y. With this we conclude this lecture on inverse trigonometric function which was based on the properties and graph of cosecant function and properties of inverse trigonometric functions and some important results that help us out in evaluating the given inverse trigonometric expression.